Hello and welcome to our show. Yeah, I said it, even though the title only mentions one of our names. That's Mike. I'm Dunny. How you doing today, partner? Yeah, I, I see how this is going. The shift is starting sure, to occur. Pull it For on sure. Back. <laughs> Someone stole my earpiece, you, you know, and now it's our show. Uh, I'm doing wonderful, buddy. Yeah. How are you? I'm, I'm doing good. wonderful. Hey, let's get these up really quick. I, I mean, show these things. Look at these. You got to show your Air Jordans. Oh, okay. Well, it's like a edition. shoe show. Let's just leave them up. And now for I'm going to do something really mean. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> What's you wrong said with how you? you clean them. Oh, you what's wrong you with you? Them. These are white, though. Oh, those are white. Hey, um, before we get started, we, we got a fun show tonight. We're going to mess around a little bit, kind of go back and forth. But uh, clarify, for some people on Saturday night in Philadelphia, we're confused uh, with a post-game show. Uh, with Usually, we do a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-one -on -one conversation in the post-game show. Uh, you got caught up. 150 people, friends, family in Philadelphia weren't allowed back into the back of the house to jump on our interview. So just to clarify, I know some people were trying to make a big deal out of it. Um, what in the world, why aren't you, where's your pass? Don't you have an all stadium pass? Well, first of all, I appreciate you saying that, but the truth is I was embarrassed by the game and I didn't wanna, <laughs> I didn't wanna come in there and talk to you. Um, I don't blame you. No, in all seriousness, um, yeah, I, I had a hundred, cl Philly's close to where I live. Yeah. Um, had about 150, it was supposed to be 200, but only 150 came. Um, friends and family, and they were sitting just off to the left uh, on the stands, and once everything cleared out, I went to say hello to them quick, and it was supposed to be a quick hello, and then come do some certain things, and then go back out there. Yeah. Uh, I got dragged in by friends and family, and then somebody who works there um, did not let me back through that way, so I went the other way. Um, honest mistake, for those who know, you know, from last year when I came, the bad losses last summer, uh, to this early early season on the road, um, I'm not one to shy away from that. So I apologize if anybody got offended by it, anybody uh, thought differently by it. But yeah, it was good. more the Jersey, New York friends and family that that tractor beam me in, and then the the Philly guy who wasn't very nice to me. <laughs> now we know it's like Friday, top flight security, yep. all up in Talent Energy Stadium. Now I want to talk about <clears throat> something really important: social media. Oh. Ser seriously. Uh, computers we have in our pockets have obviously changed everything in our life. From the way that we live, the way we work, the way we communicate, the way we share information. But nothing is the same as when you and I left the playing field, uh, let alone a mere three years ago. Uh, but as technology continues to evolve, what are, I guess, the biggest, I don't know, biggest differences that you see with players? Let's just start with the players. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Loaded question. What are the biggest differences? Social media. Well, there's a lot more social media. Mm. You know, when I when I finished playing, I'm trying to think if I joined Twitter from the urgence of the team that I played with or coached with. I'm trying to think if it was 2010 or 11. Regardless, I was asked to go on this new thing called Twitter. And it was amazing, you know? I was addicted right away. You know, to me, it was always an enjoyment of interacting with supporters, yeah. people who, you know, I would never have the chance to. You know, um, but it's blown up into something so totally crazy to the point that, you know, a lot of coaches ban phones, you know, in, in the locker room yeah. during, you know, a certain amount before practice, a certain amount before games, because it's really taken over. Um, I have not had a serious issue with social media, knock on wood, uh, with players. <laughs> um, but it's an interesting dynamic, you know. Yeah. The world is literally one second news blip. Yeah. You know, as far as as soon as it happens, it's all over the place. And that, to me, is a bit scary. Um, how has, I guess, the, I don't know, the locker room dynamic, you kind of touched on it. How does it change now? Um, like you said, you have some coaches that will say, absolutely not, turn off the phones the moment you walk through the door. You have other coaches maybe that are a little bit more lenient. Um, then you have some coaches that are, listen, let's be an open book. Let's pull back the curtain. Let's show the fan base exactly what they are, what they're searching for, which yeah. is inevitably fan base thinks that they are your friend. They know you uh, and how you interact either, I don't know, gives you, gives them, um, I don't know, a semblance of, of understanding and respect and that knowledge that, that they are friends with you, or it gets caught in a kind of a situation where you become a target because you're not interacting. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's a double-edged sword to me. With as, all... as we saw right there, you showing uh, the, the subway on the way oh, to the subway. Yankee Stadium. Well, listen, I'm very careful in, in what I put out there. Um, with everything I do in my life, I try to at least 
sit back, take the emotion out of it, whether it's a bad situation or even a good situation, not to just jump on something and put something out there. Mm. Uh, and that's what I'm fearful of a lot of people nowadays, not just people, but in, in my realm, uh, soccer players in the locker room after games. It's very, um, it's very intriguing. It's very um, alluring. You know, to have that phone sitting right there after yeah. a tough loss or after uh, a referee uh, called a, made a call that you don't agree with or after maybe you had a, an issue with somebody on the staff or another player to, to vent on social media. And then to have that backlash come back and you cannot take that back. It's an interesting thing. We talked a couple of weeks ago about raising kids and all that. Mm -hmm. And my, my sons are not on social media at all. Uh, they will be one day, of course, and the constant reminder that anything that you do, any picture that's taken, any forever. anything that you write or something is forever. Yeah. Even if you delete it right away, somebody has that. Mm. You know, this whole thing, what is it called? Snapchat? Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah, that, that's 30 seconds yeah. once you open it up? And, and young kids, like my kids don't realize is that yeah, after 30 seconds, it dissolves or goes away somewhere into the, into the <laughs> Snapchat universe. But there's that thing that you could take a picture of yeah, a screen. Yeah, yeah. And, and to me, that's a bit scary. And, and I, try to, I try to handle my Twitter affairs. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Snapchat or anything else like that uh, on Twitter. And I enjoy it because there's nothing that I would ever put out there uh, that would be rash, that would be, you know, in, in my personal realm as far as work as far as family you know if i'm watching the yankees or the giants in the super bowl i might put something pretty rash out yeah. there but uh and that's what i get scared about sometimes with uh with some of the players well right now you can see uh even the other day was it yesterday oh. put a band-aid <laughs> on it luke training at 11 15 tomorrow don't be late um that's it, the good side of twitter though it, it is it, but it's it is a it is a dynamic shift between you and your players at times because here you are having this, this immediacy, instantaneously putting out information and connecting with whoever's following you or getting out whatever urge you have to get yeah. out at that moment, but also knowing it can be looked at in two ways. Number one, it can be something incredibly positive and informing, or it could be something so emotional that it comes back to haunt you later, much like you tweeting out totally random, but Dirty Dancing, Nobody Puts Baby in a Corner <laughs> is one of the most iconic lines <laughs> in movie history. <laughs> make you fall down right now. I can't believe that was from preseason like two years ago. I mean, somebody found it. It's forever, like we said. But you know something, Brian? <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because it's going to feed into my next point. There's a fine line between, let's say, something like that. Me laying in pre... I remember laying down in preseason after double day. Yeah. And Dirty Dancing, come on. One of my favorite movies, okay? Come on, nobody puts baby in the corner. The lift, all <laughs> yeah. that stuff. Um, I even, I think, I, I, I won't confirm nor deny that my wife and I have the whole end of the thing dance. Have you tried the lifter? I'm not, I'm okay. not confirming. So that's a yes, I, I respect out there. that. There's a fine line between something like that, something like um, Luke, I, I, I texted him earlier today, how you doing, the other yeah. lot, and then see his picture on there in the hospital bed, and me just think of something funny to say to lighten the mood. Or the time that I talked about uh, practice being moved, I don't know if you remember yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a fine line between that than me say, going to a meeting with my owner, Deloy Hansen, who I yeah, love, yeah. and after, let's say, the um, Pick, pick a number of them, but the LA loss, the LAFC loss at home, and him ripping me apart, which he should have, and I'm glad he did, and me coming out of that and writing on, oh, to just ripped me apart, you know, yeah. hashtag get off my back or something <laughs> like that, you know, like there's a fine line between that, and I don't think everybody has that fine line. Yeah. They're, they're, they're too emotional, too rash, and they don't realize is that people are perceiving you in a certain way, and I'm not saying not to be true, but chill out. Cool off. You set it back there. Take a 24-hour no. uh, stance. Think about things, and, and then put things out there. Yeah, and, and to put that conversation in perspective, here's another one. Proud of my players. Proud of my supporters. <laughs> proud of my organization. Great night. We aren't satisfied, though. Still an opportunity ahead. Um, th this was August you as well back in August. Uh -huh. um, it, so being a part of, of MLS's media training, one of the conversations that I've had with players is sometimes when they jump on Twitter after a game, yeah. Whether it's a, if it's a win, they're up here because everyone's saying, great game, you're amazing. If it's a loss, you're terrible, you suck, you should never put on the jersey again. Yep. Um, and where I would say for those that got emotionally invested in reading it and almost couldn't get away from yeah. it, couldn't put it down, think about using Instagram. And then Instagram could be 
your way to communicate, where it's not so much about words, but it's more about kind of the, the visuals. And then it could, you know, you can align your accounts and then that way you're kind of dealing with. But it's interesting because I utilize Twitter in a way where it's an information sharing opportunity. Yep. I don't necessarily agree or disagree with some of the stuff that I'm retweeting, but I utilize it as a way to continue the narrative or the conversation about the game, to blow things out. Spark to Spark a conversation, yeah. get people's heads. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not always fantastic, but it's not always malicious. Um, but the other thing to think about, I think, for players is if you do get invested in that, put the phone down for 24 yeah. hours and then maybe come back and then talk about something that's a little bit more emotional right now. Uh, maybe it will. You never know. Uh, hit the retweet oh. button. The that was more having fun. relying on you. That was more having fun. Yeah, and, and see, this is where something where at times I'm accused of, of joking around. We, we cyberbullying one, yeah. of an, one another, having a good time with it. But it's more like when I know someone's coming at me, I know for 99% of the time they're never going to say it to my face. So I'm going to find something in your tweet <laughs> where you've either thing. misspelled something I'm going to CSI the living heck out yep. of you. I'm going to go back through your timeline and find something. Yep. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you back. Yep. I'm going to light you up. Well, I'll tell you right now two things. First, I love the people who talk crap on Twitter, uh, not just to me or to you or to anybody, just seeing comments here. And you look at their icon. It's not their name. It's, it's not the their egg. picture. <laughs> you go in their media. There's no picture of them or their family. Yeah, yeah. And they're just sitting there on the couch just throwing, yeah. throwing stones. Yeah. And come on, dude, you know? But the other thing is, is that, in order, to, in order to be in a position like I am, or, or a player, or yourself, you have to have thick skin. Yeah, yeah, if you're yeah, on yeah. social media yeah. like this, and you have a certain amount of followers, and, and, and you're committed to having that personal relationship, which I feel it is, with people I never get to meet, or I know are out watching at the riot, but I never get to have contact with. You know, the amount of times that I send a direct message to somebody, you know, because I liked what they said. Or, yeah. or even just retweeted them not knowing who they are and just giving some sort of thumbs up type thing. You know, to me, I think that's awesome. It's important. I think that, that more athletes, well, actually, that's wrong to say because all athletes are, do, are on there, but should use it as a positive thing. But when, you, when you're seeing something that they're criticizing you, first of all, I feel they have a right to. Hmm. I don't know if they necessarily have a right to do and say certain things that they say and do, yeah. but to have an opinion on a game or an opinion on, or a question about why are you coaching this way or, or, or what was your reasoning behind that, I might not get back to them, but I have no problem with that. But it's when they really step over the line and then what, again, to go back before what I said, my concern is with, a, with one of my players is if they go over the line too much, what's their response going to mm. be in the moment and is it going to cause some sort of issue? Uh, so you, you, you kind of bring up an important part of this equation of having the ability to tweet out whatever you want at any time. But what about, I guess, uh, sensitive information where I'll give you a couple different examples and, and it's not towards anybody. If the team's traveling and a player's, not, a player's not a part of that travel squad, if he's tweeting and it's very obvious that he's not a part of the travel squad, so then it's easy for the opponent to kind of, nope, he's not a part of this. If it's guys getting surgery or guys out injured how do you or or if it's just guys that are i don't know frustrated in the moment venting over their frustration how do you walk that fine line of wanting to give someone a slap and be like come on you know better um versus having to create an environment where inevitably you have to do some type of fine system over simple stupidity. Well, to me, there's a big difference between the first two things you said, if I grouped them together, and the third thing you said, yeah. you know? If a player's not traveling, it's just tweeting, you know, I'm at home with the girlfriend or something like that, there's no way for me to say, hey, in this day and age and, and this, this world, for me to go, hey, listen, Wait, wait until wait until seven o'clock the next night yeah. when we're playing yeah. that their coach didn't realize, and then sense? you could get back on but Twitter. But isn't that common sense? I don't know. No, Mike, I don't think so. Mike. I don't think so. Unless I, it's a big if player. If I'm not traveling, if I'm not a part of the team, and I'm sitting there tweeting or texting or Instagram or Snapchatting or Facebooking, and it's evident I'm not on the travel squad, what I, if the, what, I, I, I'm hey, like, no. What, what if I'm the FCC on. came to you? What if the FCC came to you after one of your broadcasts or a game mm. and said, you can't say that. You, you have to stay off social media because of this and that and censoring you. Mm. I, I, I disagree no, with you. I get you. what you're saying. I hear what you're saying too, I get, though. I just think Something it's common like sense. That. I'm saying from a player's perspective, that should be common well, sense. Well, of course it's common sense, yeah. but, but you, you can't teach somebody <laughs> common sense, Brian, okay? And as far as an injury thing, again, uh, 
we have the MLS protocol that mm -hmm. uh, by Thursday or Wednesday that injury reports go out. Yeah, some so teams are really honest. Well, again, about that's, that. a, that, that's a question. <laughs> hey, that's a question some for teams MLS. Are that, really honest yes, about that, that. that. Maybe that's the next show for sure. <laughs> but the third thing you said about a player airing his grievances, social media, to me, I, I would never air something. If I didn't like the show tonight, or you made me mad tonight, something you said really hit something. For me to say goodbye, Brian, I'll see, see you next time, and go there and, and put something down. Brian Dunn says, you know, can't believe this and that. To me, that's not a man. Mm. You know, to me, that, that's cowardly. So I haven't, inter I haven't had many interactions with that, although I have, and it's very quick and easy meeting with the person and say, this is, that's your final warning. Be a man and come talk to me. Yeah. It's like I am with you. Yeah. You know, I don't just leave you out of the line. I come talk to you. You know, if there's an issue, I come talk to you. That's how I live my life. So for you, that's the bad part of social media is what I'm talking about. You know, for somebody to air their grievances before they talk to the person, or even at all, to be honest yeah. with you, that's a private matter. But is there, there's a fine line, right, between airing grievances and making it personal versus saying maybe in the collective that um, we can all do better. There's a fine line. Yeah, it's a way you word things, yeah. of course. Spe speaking of the way you word things, dear MLS and Pro, I apologize, but my 10-year-old got a hold of my phone and might have retweeted something. What date was that? A <laughs> shocking emoji face. Oh, that was during the playoffs <laughs> last year. Yeah, you, you should show the tweets before. It would all make sense then. <laughs> No, but that, that's humor to me, you yeah. know? It's humor and it's tongue in cheek. I gave the winky eye thing, you know? But um, listen, social media to me, I think is very important. I think it, it should be respected and not abused. Um, and there's always gonna be little situations when players and, and people of, of, subs, of um, stature are gonna say the wrong things. Yeah. But to me, I, I don't think I've ever, I've ever said anything wrong on there as far as controversial that I had to say, oh, I'm sorry or yeah, something. But, nah, nah. but there's still time. still time in my life. You got a good account. I, 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 I enjoyed when you were pulling your uh, mattresses out. For, <laughs> for, for, <laughs> um, little Birdie once oh, told me a few, in, uh, few individuals inside the locker room have not always been pleased with the way the club was depicted on the oh. official account here and there. How do you view the club's account? Um, because in, in, through your eyes, versus the idea that they're always trying to connect with the consumer and um, new consumers, uh, yeah. the average fan that still hasn't had a reason to be 100% um, connected to the club. I think it's vital uh, for not only our club, but all clubs, all sports, all uh, organizations, whether it's business or whatever it is, you know, in a day and age where people want information, want news now. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't get that news out, somebody else is going to get it out. I get that. Having said that, um, there's been many conversations that I've had with the media uh, front office. Um, started off as coming up, having conversations. And there's been a couple of times I went up and, and we've had very candid very loud at times Passionate. interaction. And Passionate. that's what I like. And I've made it clear to them when I got hired here is that, yeah, I might be the coach. And if you tell me I'm in charge of this, I'm still going to come to the professionals. I'm not a social media expert. Mm -hmm. I'm not a media expert. So I want to come to you and say, why would you put this out? Or yeah. how can we do this Help differently? Help me understand. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, one example is, and, and most people who follow you know, the team and, and have listened to me, I don't like when a new player or a young player yeah, yeah. Did I steal something? You're going to say something about that <laughs> no, next? No, no, no. When a young player maybe has their first or, you know, their second game or something and they played well. We want to and celebrate all of a sudden, it, Mike. Blowing up the media <laughs> and blowing up social media. <laughs> and to me, you know, it's going up and saying, hey, pull the reins back. Mm. You know, or where perhaps one last thing I'll say is where I really started thinking a lot after I went up and was angry about this and there was a good point made back at me, but I still ho held to my beliefs is news is news. You know, and that's what I, that's the way I look at it. So when your team and organization maybe tweet something out, retweet something from a separate source huh. that criticize some part of your organization as far as a player or the coaching staff or whatever, you know, that, that to me was, what are we doing here? You know, mm -hmm. but that's a, that's almost like a Homer type. Yeah. We talk about hometown, you know, don't keep all the bad stuff out, only do the good. So I was kind of caught off guard with the response and I kind of agreed to it agree with it, but at the end of the day, uh, I know they have a job to do, and I know that everybody wants information now, everybody wants to hear this right away, but uh, I'm a bit of a micromanager with things like yeah. that, and, and, and I get a little obsessed sometimes. I, I got called a homer this past weekend. From who? Because I was explaining um, how the goal was called back by Epps, 
And I was explaining where the attacking phase of play started, and it was that 50-50 ball with Dimir yeah. right in the center. And I feel like a lot of fans don't understand what attacking phase of play, how that institutes. Of and what they that, don't. And maybe they shouldn't. But... The, but this is a part of video review, right? Yeah. And upstairs, we're just guessing while you guys are guessing. Yeah. And it wasn't until we got a definitive look that uh, Epps was in an offside position when that final ball was played through. Yeah. But I was explaining from the attacking phase of play to where the goal was scored. This is where, when we see the referee, where he stands and how he indicates will give us a better clarification. Because I don't know about you guys downstairs, but when video review comes into play, we're not given any information. No, neither am I. Yeah. So it's Neither like, well, I. I know if his hand goes up, it's it's offside. I'm the guy. I'm the guy the also middle, yeah. with the popcorn biting his nails and <laughs> yeah. eating. Let me ask you this, all right? Now we're, yeah. we're going to something else. The Orlando game, um, the the goal that uh, I forgot who it was, was standing on the goal line. Yeah. And Nick dove towards him. Now he was he was two feet behind Nick or, or two feet away from Nick. What's your view on that? As far and, and this, uh, be honest. Yeah. To me. And now we would have lost. We would have lost uh, two one then. Yeah. All right. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining or anything. I'm trying to get into the whole VAR thing. How a, how a referee views certain things. To me, he's in Nick's peripheral. Mm. And when Nick, I know for a fact because you can kind of see on the thing, he goes to dive and he kind of hesitates a little because yeah. someone's standing right there. And then he goes. Now, if the guy wasn't there, would Nick have saved it? I, I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch it again. But to me, it's just, there's no, a lot of things, there's no clear-cut rule. So a lot it's of gray all, area. Yeah, a lot of gray area. And it's how perhaps the next weekend, and perhaps more likely, another referee would call it differently. Yeah. Or that or something else. There's no clear-cut definition. And maybe that's a good thing. You know, yeah. maybe there should be some gray I'm all over the place, but maybe there should be some gray areas. But my point is, is that where I thought VAR was going to be so definitive... So definitive. You could stop a game, go over, look at this screen, spend two, three minutes, replay it in 10 different angles, and you're going to get it right every mm. time. And I don't know if I'm extremely upset that they don't get it right all the time, or I'm absolutely okay with that because yeah. there is that gray area that maybe there should be to make it human. Yeah, I think with Nick's perspective, they would say because he's not standing in front of him, it doesn't affect his sideline. That's what they'll say. Uh, two... Technology's flawless. Brian, Brian hold on error. a second, hold yeah. on a second. That's I see a, yeah. you. Brian, I'm looking straight ahead, yeah. right? Yeah. Can you get a, uh, you see my eyes going, yes. Brian, hold up fingers on the side of me. One, two, three, one pinky right there. Damn. Well, you're looking in the monitor. No, I'm, all right, all right. <laughs> my point is, is that I, I, I'm a 42-year-old guy who's yeah. losing his eyesight. You're 42? Nick, Nick, yes, I'm 42. Oh, Nikki is a state-of-the-art athlete. To say that, now you started me on something. I know. To say know. that because he wasn't in front of him, Nikki couldn't see him. You gotta be kidding me. I, no, I'm saying what they'll what, say. No, I'm saying what yeah. they'll say. Yeah. yeah. All right. You know, I you know what's flawless? I'm sorry. Goal line technology is flawless. It's just expensive. <laughs> it's just expensive. Hey, uh, come back. What? What? You know, come you, back to Earth. You well, mean? Well, no. You and you and I had a, a really important show last week. Um, it was an important topic, and we used this as a platform to kind of talk about the importance of inclusiveness. Yeah. And after the show, we're we're gonna put together something. Um, for upcoming matches, uh, that kind of has to do with this tweet, and we touched on it last week uh, down in Orlando. The importance for you, Mike, and we touched on it, you being a father, uh, your role as, as raising young men in this society, and there's so many things happening right now, so many horrific situations that we're seeing in real time. How do you find the balance of the teaching moments when you do use social media as a platform. Teaching moments to Anything anybody. that you choose. A anything Again, that you feel is an important... Utilizing Twitter as a, as a, as a tool it, it, to get your message across. Well, that's why last week's show was very important to me, and I know it was very important to mm -hmm. you. Um, for I think we're, it's, it was important to both of us for the issue at hand that we both feel somewhat strongly about. Yeah. Um, but the other thing to me is, is I explained last week, I've never really put myself out there with something like this. Um, and perhaps it's a little bit of fear, don't get me wrong. And the other part is privacy. You know, I don't need anybody to know who I voted for. Mm. I don't need anybody to know what I feel about Donald Trump. You know, uh, he's the president. My, my view is he's the president, whether I like him or anything, He's there until either four years come up or he gets impeached with something crazy, which might not be out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> um, so a teaching tool, 
I'm very, I feel I'm very respectful in my tweets. I think very carefully. I could have written a lot more controversial stuff on mm. that tweet right there. But to me, who could argue with my view of respect, equality, stop the violence? Simple, yeah. Even if you don't agree with it. I didn't say anything, any catchphrase there. Uh, and that's how I try to go along with everything. And don't get me wrong, like we talked about, I'm getting older, I'm 42, Bri. I might start losing my marbles Oof. and throw some, a lot of stuff Oof. out there. But um, I think it could be a good teaching moment, but you're always gonna have at least one, if not hundreds, of people who disagree with you and are gonna no have doubt. something to say. No and doubt. you have to be prepared for that. And I think a big reason and way, not reason, a big way to be prepared in that is how you word the initial tweet. Yeah. Uh, by the way, thank you everyone for last week for the support uh, sending on all levels of social media to Mike and I. Uh, it, was, uh, it was fantastic okay. to kind of see how that was absorbed. Uh, that's it for us tonight. Remember, Utah Royals on the road in Portland this Friday. Real Monarchs at T2 on Saturday and Real Salt Lake on the road in Seattle on Saturday afternoon. We'll see you next week, everyone. Take care, guys.